Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the blessings of the Lord will be poured out on everyone without exception. The blessings of God on you, on me. It will come in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer before the study. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the members of the church. Thank you for invitees. Thank you for all the locations where we're hearing your word together today. We pray, Lord, you'll open the pages of the scriptures to everyone's heart in Jesus' name. Bless us beyond our expectation. I will pray, Lord, that you open our eyes to behold wondrous, wonderful things out of your word in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we're coming to Mark chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 1. Tonight we're studying from verse 1 to verse 13. Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread, with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands of often, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Let's come to verse 5. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? He answered and said unto them, Well, as Isaiah the prophet prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honoreth me with their leaves, but their heart is far from me. In verse 8, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. In verse 9, and he said unto them, For well, ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Verse 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things ye do. Tonight we come to such an important subject that we need to understand because Jesus Christ confronted the religion of the Jews. They were zealous, they were passionate, and they were very active in their religion. But the pity of it is they were not saved and they were not willing to listen to the word that will get them saved. They thought their religion was enough. They thought their tradition was enough. And actually their tradition was not coming out of the Bible. Not even out of the Old Covenant. Not even out of the Old Testament. They had developed a system of religion. And they had developed this in such a way that they cared to those traditions. And when Christ came and brought the word of life to them, the word of salvation to them, they were not going to listen. Because they were wedded and they were attached 
is separately to their tradition. That's why we are bred tonight that the Pharisees came. They came from Jerusalem and they saw what Jesus Christ was doing and they heard the word he was teaching and then they saw the disciples eat bread without washing the ceremonial washing. It wasn't about hygiene. They washed normally and they ate normally. But you see, they developed a tradition whereby they will wash their hands to the elbow and do it ceremoniously and do it in a sanctimonious way. And they knew they were keeping to their religion. It wasn't only the Pharisees, it has spread to all the Jews. But Jesus Christ did not teach his own disciples to follow the religious tradition of the people. Because of that they found fault and he said, why are your disciples eating bread without washing like the elders have commanded? And Jesus had the chance to challenge them. Why is it that you have abandoned the word of God and you are keeping to your own tradition? The tradition that does not save. And Jesus pointed out to them very clearly, you have abandoned the word of God. You have jettisoned the word of God. You have rejected the word of God. Push the word of God aside that you may keep your own tradition. Tonight we're looking at the word of God concerning the subject exalting God's eternal word above man's empty tradition. Exalting God's eternal word above man's empty tradition. The tradition was empty. The tradition was powerless. The tradition was worthless. He couldn't cleanse their heart. He couldn't change their character. He couldn't give them conversion. It couldn't give them relationship with God. He could not prepare them for heaven. It was empty. In relationship, it was empty. Concerning righteousness, it was empty. And concerning the opening their eyes, opening their heart to the meaning and interpretation of the word of God, it served no purpose. And yet, they kept on doing it. How many people today go through traditional religion without ever thinking, what's the good of this? What's the purpose of this? What's the effect of this? What's the influence of this in our lives? They do not think, they do not meditate, and they do not examine or search as to the benefit of what they do. Just empty tradition. But if we're going to have the blessings of God, if we're going to have righteousness in the Lord, we must go back to the Word of God. It's the Word that enlightens us. It's the Word that shows us the way of the Lord. It's the Word that shows us about our salvation. It's the Word that declares to us about Christ, the living Word that has come to bring redemption, righteousness, salvation unto us and so it befits everyone that calls the name of the Lord to exalt God's word God's living word God's infallible word God's eternal word above any tradition of any man any tradition of any elders any tradition of any denomination any tradition of any religion tonight as I said we're looking at the message exalting God's eternal word above man's empty tradition. Three things we're looking at in the passage. Number one, the tradition of washed hands and defiled hearts. The tradition, the practice, the duty, the responsibility, the imposed worship of washing hands and defiled hearts. The tradition of washed hands and defiled hearts. Point number two, the transgression of willful hypocrites. The Lord Jesus Christ called the Pharisees hypocrites a number of times. And they were willful. 
they closed their eyes, they closed their mind. They didn't want to see, they didn't want to know. They were willful in their hypocrisy and they continued in transgression, the transgression of willful hypocrites with deceptive hearts. They deceived themselves and they deceived other people and they compelled themselves, they compelled other people. They imposed hypocrisy on themselves and impose that hypocrisy on other people, the transgression of willful hypocrites with deceptive hearts. Point number three, the transformation of washed hearts in discerning hearers. There were people that came near. There were people that came to hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they saw a difference. They saw that this, the teacher, come from heaven. They saw that he taught with authority. They saw that his teaching brought a change of life. And they saw the reality of the truth. And because they were discerning hearers, they yielded to the Lord. And their hearts were surrendered to the Lord. And their hearts were washed by the word, by the water of the word. And they became transformed by the word that is spoken to them, the transformation of washed hearts in discerning hearers. Let's come to number one. Number one, I'm reading from Mark chapter 7, and we're looking at it from verse 1. They came together unto him, the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. Isn't it it wouldn't it have been a wonderful scene? Then came together unto him. If they came with the right mind, if they came to learn, if they came to see, if they came with the prayer, open my eyes, open my heart, Lord. If they came with the understanding that Jesus had something for them that will transform their lives, that will change their lives, it would have been wonderful. But they came for fault finding. They came for fault finding. They came to look for imperfection in him that is perfect. They came to look for unrighteousness in him that is righteous. They came to look for fault in him that is faultless. When you come to the presence of the Lord, you shall come with the right attitude. Whatever I do not know, whatever I have not seen, whatever I have not learned, O oh Lord, teach me. Let your word come to me that will cancel so tradition out of my life. Look at verse 2. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. They found fault. Fault finders, the people that are not finding any fault in their own lives. They're not finding anything wrong in their own lives. They thought they were perfect. They were not saved. They thought they were right. Just, they were not born again. They thought they were all right and their lives was filled with hypocrisy. All they wanted to do is to find fault in other people. And it says in verse 3, for the Pharisees and all the Jews except they wash their hands often, eat not holding the tradition of the elders. Holding the tradition of the elders. You know there are people that come into this world, the tradition and they, they just pick it up. They're not asking you know, what's the origin of this tradition. They're not asking what's the purpose of this tradition. They're not asking what is the effect, what is the transformation, what is the good, what is the profit in this tradition. They make it like that and they pick up just like that. And when they came from the market, when they come from the market, except the wash, they eat not, and many other things there be which they have received to hold. They have received to hold. And then it says that the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and even of tables. Can you imagine that? That became part of the religion. Washing the cups, not hygiene, religion. And washing the plates, not for hygiene, that's religion. And washing the business and the vessels, not for hygiene, but for, uh, but for religion. And even washing of tables. 
Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? The tradition of washed hands and the filed heart. There are three things I'm going to look at here. Number one, religious tradition religious tradition that abandons salvation religious tradition that abandons salvation number two rigid tradition that annuls the scripture that cancels the scripture that makes the scripture of non effect rigid tradition that annuls that cancels that makes impotent that makes redundant that rejects the scriptures number three ruinous tradition that alienates the soul ruinous tradition that separates the soul from the savior separates the soul from christ separates the soul from the lord ruinous tradition that alienates the soul as you look at the traditions of men you are going to find number one is religious tradition religious tradition it, and it concerns them every day they move the way from their tradition on the sabbath day and they move to every day they move it to the market they move it to washing tables they move it to everything literally everything a great body that they carried a great body they imposed upon themselves and yet the tradition the imposition the heavy body did not bring salvation I pray that every body like that every tradition like that that does not bring salvation to us the Lord will cleanse it out of our lives in Jesus name we're looking at Matthew chapter 13 and I'm reading from verse 15 Matthew chapter 13 we're looking at verse 15 for these people's heart is wax gross it's talking about the Pharisees about the Sadducees about the scribes and about the people of the Jews it says the people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing they, they will not hear the real word of God the saving word of God the convicting word of God but they will give themselves to that religious tradition and it goes on to say that their eyes they have closed their eyes they have closed lest at any time they shall see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I shall heal them the Savior was available for them they rejected the healer was available for them they rejected that they want to cleanse them purge them purify them he was available but their tradition religious tradition will not allow them why that why is why was it like that they had some gain they were having from the religion they didn't gain eternal life but there are some other gains in Galatians chapter 1 we're reading from verse 13 Galatians chapter 1 we're reading from verse 13 here is a testimony of somebody who had been in that religious tradition before that is before he got saved and before the Lord confronted him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me Galatians chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 13 for ye have heard of my conversation my manner of life in time past in the Jews religion how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it religious yet wicked religious yet cruel religious yet killing religious yet an injurious person look at verse 14 and i profited in the jewish religion above many my equals in my own nation i profited in the jewish religion that's why they kept to the tradition because they had some profit they had some gain 
the souls were degenerating, deteriorating, and yet because of the material gain they had in that tradition, that's what they kept to it. It says, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers, of the tradition that will not save, of the tradition of the elders. That tradition cannot save. If you are going to be saved, you have to examine your life and you have to examine your religion. You have to see whether it is helping you or not helping you. In First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading here from verse 18. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18. In verse 18, for as much as you know that she were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. You were not saved by silver, by gold, by tradition of washing, religious washing of the hands or any other part of the body that does not save after that washing of the hand, the washing of the cup, the washing of the table, and the washing of whatever they wash, they still went back into the same old scene. Although they didn't think like that, they thought they were all right. They thought the tradition helped them. They thought the tradition made them acceptable unto God. It's like we're told in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 12. There is a generation that appear in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Those Jewish people, those religious traditionalists, they prided themselves in their traditional washing, and they were pure in their own eyes, yet their hearts were not washed, their minds were not washed, their lives were not clean, and their hearts were not converted, yet it's not washed from their filthiness. Religious tradition that abandons salvation. Number two in Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, rigid tradition that annuls the scripture. Rigid. They won't ever think of not doing it. They were rigid about it. Rigid for themselves, rigid for members of their family, rigid for anyone that visits them, rigid for any neighbor, and rigid for any stranger. It was a religious thing they rigidly kept to. If you accepted the tradition, you are their friends. If you didn't accept the tradition, they had nothing to do with you. And they wanted to compel everybody to bow to that rigidity. It tells us in Mark chapter 7, I'm reading here from verse 4. It says in verse 4, And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. It's something never to be forgotten. It's something you know, that they always observe. Anywhere they went, if they traveled out anywhere, they will do it. If they came back, they will do it. If they go to their office and they have something to eat, they have to do it. And if they came from the market, they had to do it. They were rigid about it. And it says many other things there be. Not only the washing, many, many things. There are many rules that they kept as in rigidity. And it says that many other things also there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and the washing of pots and the washing of brazen vessels and of tables. And although they were rigid about it, it gives them no peace of mind. It gave them no satisfaction that they were pleasing God. It gave them no approval from the Lord. He gave them no approval and no assurance of heaven if they died in that rigid tradition. How somebody keep rigidly to something that is not profiting him internally, not profiting him in relation
relationship with God, but he's rigidly keeping to the thing, and yet it has no value, it has no worth, it has no positive impact or influence upon him. Let's examine our lives. Are there things we do rigidly? Are there things we do ceremoniously? Are there things we do zealously? Are there things we do passionately? And yet those things do not profit us. Those things do not change our lives. Those things do not improve us. And those things do not recommend us to God. Look at Matthew chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 2. Matthew chapter 15. We're reading from verse 2. Why do the disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? They counted it as an unforgivable transgression, unforgivable sin. If anyone will not keep to those traditions of the elders, for they wash not their hands when they eat bread. And he said, and he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress? grace the commandment of God by your tradition for God commanded saying honor thy father and thy mother and you have received uh, to keep to that in every family in every home everyone as a father everyone as a mother and the Lord has given you the commandment and you have the chance of obeying that commandment honoring your father honoring your mother in every home and he says see that cursed father or mother, let him die the dead. But she say, Whosoever shall say unto his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honoreth not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. The Lord asked them, you are asking me, why don't I keep the tradition of the elders? All right, elders on the one hand, God Almighty on the other hand, God the Creator on the other hand, God that holds the breath of every man in the whole earth on the other, God that has commanded on the other, God the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on the other hand. I am keeping his commandment and you are keeping the commandment of the elders. Who is greater, God or the elders? Why is it you are so rigid and you are keeping to the tradition Tradition of the elders, ordinary men, ignorant men, simple men that will not even go to heaven. And you are so rigid about keeping their commandments and you reject the commandments of God. Are you asking me which of the commandments you are breaking? All the commandments of God. Let me give you an example. The word of God says, honor your father, honor your mother and take care of them. As you take care of them, you are honoring them. And as they go older and older and older, the older they are, the more care you ought to give to them. But you say that whatever I should have given to my mom, whatever I should have given to my dad, is a gift. I've given it to the Pharisees in the temple. I've given it in the synagogue, in the sanctuary. And therefore, I'm not going to give anything anymore to my my father to my mother and you allow those people to continue like that because that's part of your tradition why is it you are contradicting and you are transgressing the commandment of God because of your rigidity in the tradition of men look at Jeremiah chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 22 Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 22 uh, let's look at what the word of God has said about all the washing they were doing. It says in Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 22, For though thou watch thee was neater, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, says the Lord God. Think about that. All the washing avails nothing. The washing of the hands, 
while the heart is still dirty, the washing of the hand, while the soul is still dirty, the washing of the hand, while the life is still defiled, it means nothing. Even if you take a purgative, and even if you take soap, and even if you take any sin and detergent, your iniquity is matched before me. The water cannot wash anything. There are people that believe in the washing of water baptism. And they say once you are baptized in water, everything is all right. They make that another tradition. And there's no repentance, but there's baptism. There's no righteousness, but there is baptism. There's no new birth, but there is baptism. And they take that water baptism, that dipping into the river, or they're making a sign of the cross by water. They think that's enough tradition to make you acceptable unto God. Not really. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse, reading from verse 13. Acts chapter 8 verse 13. Then Simon himself believed also. That's what he said. And when he was baptized, he was dipped in water. He was, he was drenched in water. He was soaked in the water, baptized. He continued with Philip and wondering, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. Look at his real life, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' sons, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thine heart is not right in the sight of God. Thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Even water baptism by the evangelist Philip, just keeping to that tradition, baptism, 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 it's not enough. Your heart must be cleansed, your life must be changed, and your inner man must be converted. He was told he had no part, no lot in this matter. Why? Even though he was baptized traditionally, his heart was not right with God. Verse 22, repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God, if peradventure the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. We're looking at Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 24. When I come to another man who thought the washing of the hand is enough, you don't have to repent, you don't have to flee from evil, you don't have to change anything. Wash your hands, then you are all right. Not, not really. Wash your hands. If that's where you stop, you are not all right. In Matthew chapter 27, reading from verse 24, when Pilate saw that he prevailed nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See it to it. He took water and he washed his hand and he said, I am innocent. I am free. I am all right. I wash my hands. No pilot, you cannot save yourself. You're washing your hand, does not save you. You're still involved in this. Look at verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scorched Jesus, look at the man. I wash my hand. I'm innocent. I'm not involved in this. 
He is a just man. And I cannot do any sin negative to him. But now he scourged Jesus and he delivered him to be crucified. Washing the hand is not enough. Actually, those souls are ruined. They ruined themselves because they think that washing their hand was enough for them. The ruinous tradition that alienates the soul. The ruinous tradition that alienates the soul, separates the soul from the Lord. The more they washed their hands, the more they had confidence, I'm all right, I'm righteous. I'm acceptable in the sight of the Lord in Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. They might be saved, not saved yet. The washing of the hand, the washing of the cup, the washing of the vessels, and the washing of the tables did not save them. And the washing of uh, water, amino said, did not save them. I'm praying for them. I'm burdening for them. I have the desire before God they should be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Not according to knowledge. You see, the outward cleansing was enough, not according to knowledge. They think that the cleansing of the hand up to the elbow and the rest, their thoughts were dirty, their minds were dirty, their actions were dirty, their behavior dirty and ruinous. They thought the washing of the water was enough. I bear them record that they have the zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, for they being ignorant of of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They go about even to win other people and to bring other people into the bondage of their tradition. Matthew chapter 23 verse 15. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites. Have you ever thought about that? If the washing of the hand has saved them, Christ will not tell a saved person what to you. If the washing of the cups and the vessels and the tables had saved them, if their names were written in heaven, if they were children of God, Christ will not tell children of God, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. They were hypocrites. If they were saved, they will not be hypocritical. If they were righteous, they'll not be hypocritical. If they were cleansed on the inside, they'll not be hypocritical. But ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, one convert, one follower. They went about and they crossed the sea and they crossed land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more, the, ch the child of hell, than yourselves. When they brought those converts, their own converts, their own proselytes, their own followers, instead of teaching them the word of God, what did they teach them? They taught them tradition. And those people became more hardy and they became twofold more the children of hell than they were before. Think about it. As we go about making converts, Think about it as religious people go about making converts. Do they make them saved, born again, showing them the word of God, showing them the way of truth, and showing them the way of life eternal? Many of those religious people, they just bring them to their denominations and they make them to follow tradition, tradition that does not save. I pray we will not be like that. I pray you will not be like that. In Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 28 and 29. Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Whatever you do outwardly, washing the hand, washing any other part of the body, 
whatever you do outwardly you put on this you put up that whatever you do outwardly uh, keeping the tradition of the elders is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a Jew in the real sense which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of me whose praise is not of the Pharisees or the Sadducees whose praise is not of the Jews whose praise is not of the traditional elders but of God we come to point number two now the transgression of willful hypocrites with deceptive hearts. We're coming back to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, and we're reading from verse 6. Mark chapter 7, verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well, as Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, these people honoreth me with their leaves, but their heart is far from me. They honor me with their leaves, but their heart is far from me. He said, the prophet had prophesied about you. That as God is concerned about the heart, you abandon what God is concerned about. Did you hear when the Lord told Samuel, he does not look on the outward, man looks on the outward, but God looks on the heart, and yet that heart you don't concentrate on. It says everything they did, they were doing it for men. They were doing it to show men that they were right. Righteous. Did they fast? It was just hypocritical. Did they pray? It was hypocritical. Did they give arms? It was hypocritical. Everything they did, they did in the presence of men. And they didn't want to think about the condition of their hearts. It tells us in Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 2. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory or praise or appreciation or flattery of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Everything they did, they did it for show. They did it for the praise of men. They did it as a tradition, just to please men. Look at verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets and that they may be seen of men. When they prayed, they wanted to attract attention to themselves. It became their tradition. They were not praying because they had a need. They wanted God to satisfy or because they had faith in God or because they loved God so much they were praising Him, glorifying Him. Their prayer was to draw attention unto themselves they were hypocrites the tradition had so affected everything that they did it made them a total complete hypocrites look at verse 16 moreover when ye fast be not as the hypocrites hypocrites do a lot of religious things hypocrites pray hypocrites fast Hypocrites give arms, hypocrites do a lot of things that outwardly may appear right, but they're doing it for show. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces, they disfigure deliberately their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23. 
Matthew chapter 23 outward tradition outward comportment outward celebration of whatever without the heart being there merits nothing merits no favor from God Matthew chapter 23 and we're reading from verse 25 in verse 25 one to you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter they were meticulous about the outward appearance and the outside of the cup and the outside of the jug and the outside of the vessel and the outside of their surrounding but within they are full of extortion and excess fraud stealing covetousness greed it says the blind pharisee cleanse first that which is within and you cannot do that by yourself you need grace you need help you need the cleansing power of the blood of the lamb you need the grace of god and you need the promise of god to cleanse within because it's not talking about just cleansing your system it's not talking about cleansing your intestine it's not talking about colon cleansing it's talking about heart cleansing the cleansing of the mind the cleansing of the soul the cleansing of the origin of your character out of the heart proceeds all issues of life it says cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter that the outside of them may be clean also verse 27 warned to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye are like unto white sepulchres which indeed appear beautiful outside but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness it's a, you can imagine how dirty the grave is, how polluted the grave is. On the outside, it's whitened, it's cleaner, and it appears beautiful. But on the inside, very dirty and defiled. And Jesus said that's the way the lives of the Pharisees were. On the outside, in religion, everything was all right. But there was unrighteousness inside, defilement inside, filthiness inside, iniquity inside they had not been cleansed and they were not born again verse 28 even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within a full of hypocrisy and iniquity i pray will not be like that you will not be like that your family members will not be like that just religion without righteousness you remember jesus told them the prophet isaiah spoke about them and he spoke about the fact that with their mouth they were drawing close unto him but inwardly they, their hearts was far from the lord in isaiah chapter 29 isaiah chapter 29 we're reading from verse 13 isaiah chapter 29 29 we're reading from verse 13 wherefore the Lord said here is the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord reveals his desire it reveals his expectation and it also reveals his disappointment concerning the children of Israel he says for as much as these people draw near me with their mouths and with their lips do they honor me but have removed their heart far from me their heart is not given to me their heart is not surrendered unto me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men uh, let's remind ourselves although we know this already that god looks at the heart and god expects that the heart will be clean 
and is not only waiting for only the outward expression of our religion. He wants our hearts to have been purged, to have been cleansed, to have been circumcised, and to remain holy and righteous before him. For Samuel chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 7. For Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord looketh not, seeth not, as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Those Pharisees forgot that. The only thought, if they were ceremoniously cleaner, ceremonially cleaner, washed their hands, and washed any outward utensil, they thought that was all right. But God said, no, I told you that if the heart I'm interested in, Deuteronomy chapter 30, we're looking at verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. The Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. He went beyond the outward circumcision. The Lord thy God is thy God. You're saved. You're a child of God. You're brought your heart to the Lord. He has cleansed you. He has washed you. He wants to do something else. He wants to circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. It's a problem of the heart. It's the cleansing of the heart. That's why he's still asking today, as he asked in the old time, that he wanted the heart to be given unto him. Let's come to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. We're looking at verse 26. Proverbs 23, verse 26. My son, give me thine heart. I want to circumcise that heart. Give me thine heart. I want to wash that heart. Give me thine heart. I want to purge. I want to purify that heart. Give me thine heart. I want to possess that heart. My son, give me thine heart. And let thine eyes observe my ways. That's what he wanted to do for them. And that's what he still wants to do. Even today, he wants us to go beyond the washing of the hand. He wants us to present our hearts before him so he can cleanse us, so he can purge us, so he can purify us in the heart. Jeremiah chapter 24. We're reading from verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 24. Reading from verse 7. And I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, if they will give me their hearts, and I cleanse their heart, and I purge their heart, and I purify their heart, and I possess their heart, then they'll be my people, and I will be my God. What was their response to that message from the prophet Jeremiah? Let's look at uh, chapter 44 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 44, and I'm reading from verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 16. They were still religious, but then their heart went after their own willful practice and willful tradition. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. They're talking about the heart. Bring your heart. Cleanse your heart. Pray so that your heart will be washed and cleansed and purged and purified and possessed by the Lord. We know that's what the Lord is saying. As for the word, thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever goeth forth out of our own mouth. The tradition we're keeping to, we'll do that. We'll keep on doing that. You say it's worthless, that's all right. 
but we will do it. It does not have any profit, unprofitable, that's all right, but we are going to do it. Will not reconcile you with God, that's okay, but we are going to do it. It's not acceptable to God and it's not demanded by God, we understand, we are going to do it. Let your heart be cleansed and then everything will be all right. That's what God wants, as for what was spoken from the Lord. Don't worry about that. We are not going to do that. We are going to do whatever we have determined willfully in our lives. That was the condition of the people. We're coming to Second, uh, Second Timothy. I'm reading from chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. And we're reading here in Second Timothy chapter 3. Reading from verse 1. Second Timothy chapter 3. We're reading from verse 1. It says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves. What I want to do I will do. What I want to say I will say. The tradition the elders have committed to my hands I will keep. As for cleansing the heart, purging the heart, converting the heart, that one I don't want to get involved into that. They are lovers of their own ideas, they are covetous, they are boasters, they are proud, they are blasphemers, they are disobedient to parents, they are unsinful, they are unholy, without natural affection. Those Pharisees and those Sadducees, although they were washing their hands, they were more cruel than even people that were not religious. And they were more envious than people that, that were not religious. And they were going into the evil way than even people that never went to any sanctuary without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good, they are traitors, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. But look at this verse 5. They kept on in religious tradition. They kept on in rigid tradition. They kept on in ruinous tradition. They kept on in ceremonial washing. It says having a form of godliness. They still went to their sanctuary, having a form of godliness. They still read everything they thought they would read. And it says, but denying the power thereof. From such, tell me, from such, say it aloud, turn away. Look at it in verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth that will not be you that will not be me that will not be our church in jesus name let's come back now to mark chapter 7 mark chapter 7 point number three the transformation of washed hearts in discerning hearers. The transformation of washed hearts in discerning hearers. These were the people that heard the Lord and they discerned and they saw this is the truth. This is the way we're going to walk in it. It takes the grace of God. It takes the cleansing of the Lord himself. It takes the purging of the Lord himself as they believed the Lord. Mark chapter 7, we're looking at verse 5. Mark chapter 7, verse 5. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not the disciples according to the tradition of the elders? Thank God there were some disciples. Thank God there were some followers of Christ. They had heard the word of God. And they had known that Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah. And because of the promised Messiah, they abandoned tradition. They abandoned religion, they abandoned darkness, and they abandoned all the practices of the past, and they now follow Jesus Christ, and they're referred to as disciples, and they were no more walking after the tradition of the elders because the doctrine of Christ, the teaching of Christ, are taking over their lives. Look at verse 10. For Moses said, Honor thy father 
and thy mother, and whosoever causes father or mother, let him die the day. The disciples have heard that, and they realize they must show respect to their father, they must show respect to their mother, and they must help their mother, they must help their father. You remember Peter, Simon Peter, the mother of the wife was sick. He didn't say, I don't have any attention to anybody anymore. I'm following this. I'm following a new religion. I'm following the tradition of uh, somebody now. He invited Jesus to pray for the mother-in-law. That's part of the care. The life had been changed. The heart had been changed. But in the case of the Pharisees, they said in verse 11, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say a gift. They even point out a particular word in their tradition, traditional vocabulary, traditional uh, sentences or words that is throughout to the people. Have you brought your Corban? Have you brought your Corban? No, I'm going to give something to my parents. No, bring it. It is Corban. It is consecrated unto the Lord. And then you will go around, uh, you know, my mother is sick, my father is sick, I need to go and take care of my father and my mother. They said, but that's common. It is what you should have given to the sanctuary so that we who are in the sanctuary will have something uh, to, to use. A gift by whatsoever that might have profited by me, he shall be free. And you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye but in the case of these disciples they followed after the Lord and they rejected tradition and they said they were going to follow the Lord all through their lives because the word of the Lord brought life unto them look at John chapter 6 John chapter 6 it tells us in verse 63 it is the spirit that quickness the flesh profiteth nothing washing the flesh nothing washing the corpse nothing tradition of the elders that only took care of the outside of the flesh it profits nothing the words that i speak unto you their spirit and they are alive look at verse 67 then said jesus unto the twelve will you also go away then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. Thou hast the word of eternal life. And he goes on to say, and we believe and assure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. The word of Christ got into them, cleansed them, washed them, purged them. And that's what matters, the transformation of washed hearts in discerning hearers. Look at John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 3. Now ye are clean speaking to his own disciples, speaking to the Pharisees, and speaking to the Sadducees, and speaking to the scribes, he said, you're dirty, you're defiled on the inside, on the outside, you appear clean unto men, but you're full of hypocrisy and distortion and extortion. But in speaking to his own disciples, he said, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. I pray that same testimony will be ours in Jesus' name. It's on the inside the Lord is looking for cleansing. On the inside, the Lord is looking for purging. Look at, look at uh, Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, I'm reading from verse 6. Psalm 51, verse 6, Behold, that desireth truth in the inward parts. In the inward parts, 
outward cleansing is not enough. Thou desirest truth and truthfulness in the inward part, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me is the work of God. Purge me is the operation of God himself. Purge me is only what God can do. He does it by grace. He does it by the cleansing of the word. He does it by the sacrifice that is acceptable unto him on Calvary. Purge me with Esau and I shall be clean. Wash me. It's not the washing you do by yourself, but wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, blot out my iniquities, create in me a clean heart, O God. That's an important thing, create in me creating me you are the creator you can do it again you are the creator you can bring a new heart a clean heart a transformed heart to me creating me a clean heart to god and renew a right spirit within me verse 12 restore me the joy of thy salvation i cannot have my own salvation that i just make up by myself i want thy salvation restore me the the joy of thy salvation and uphold me by the free spirit the Lord will do it for everyone and if he has done it for you already he will keep you cleaner 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 whiter than snow every time in Jesus name in Isaiah chapter 1 Isaiah chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 16 Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16 wash you make you clean wash you and make you clean it's talking about the inward part it's talking about the hidden part it's talking about her inward life wash you and make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil learn to do well seek judgment relieve the oppressed judge the fatherless plead for the widows come now and let us reason together says the Lord this is the work of God and this is the work of grace and this is the work of his cleansing come now and let us reason together says the Lord do your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow do they be red like crimson they shall be as wool somebody say amen, amen. he will do it in Jesus name Jeremiah chapter 4 we're looking at verse 14 Jeremiah chapter 4 we're reading from verse 14 O Jerusalem wash thine heart from wickedness not just the hand wash thy heart from wickedness that thou mayest be saved the washing the outward washing does not get anybody saved outward cleansing does not get anybody saved going to river Jordan going to river whatever does not get anybody saved and bathing at the river does not get anybody saved wash thine heart from wickedness that thou mayest be saved how long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee the thought of I will cleanse myself I'll wash my hand in innocency you will not go beyond pilot you will still be guilty but come to the Lord and the Lord will cleanse and wash and purify us completely in Jesus name in Ezekiel chapter 36 Ezekiel chapter 36 and we're reading from verse 25 it says in verse 25 then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean if you just wash your hand you are not clean in the sight of God if you just uh, do a ceremonial cleansing you are not clean in the sight of God this is what he will do by himself he will do it tonight again then uh, I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you look at verse 26 a new heart also will I give you you can, you can do that yourself a new heart a clean heart 
a righteous heart, a submissive heart, an obedient heart. You can't give that to yourself. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. The Holy Ghost will come to abide inside you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and uh, do them. First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. We're reading from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 6. Reading from verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? No matter how many times you wash your hands, no matter how many times you wash your surrounding, no matter how many times you do that religious washing, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived by the tradition of the elders, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, the homosexuals, nor the abusers of themselves with mankind, homosexuals, no thieves, robbers of church, robbers of schools, robbers of corporations, robbers of government thieves, and no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are washed, but she are washed. All those things that will hinder us from getting in to the kingdom of God, the blood of Jesus will be applied into our heart and we are washed. And ye are washed, but she are sanctified, but she are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That the washing that matters, that the cleansing that matters in Titus, Chapter 3, Titus chapter 3, the cleansing uh, that cleanses the heart, the cleansing that washes the heart. Titus chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. Not by the works of righteousness which we have done, not by the religious clothing uh, that we wear, not by the religious washing uh, that we practice, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. He saved us. Salvation belongs unto the Lord. He is the one to save. And it says, by the washing of water, by regeneration, by the washing of water, by regeneration and renewal of the Holy Ghost is the work of God that He will do. He will do it in every heart. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 25. Us must love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word, that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word, that he and present it to himself a glorious church the outward cleansing cannot present a glorious church to him outward dressing cannot present a glorious church unto him and the outward activities of the Pharisees and the Sadducees cannot produce a glorious church but it's the cleansing of the word it is the washing by the word it is the sanctification by the word that presents to him a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. He will do it. I said he will do it. We're looking at Revelation chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 5. Revelation chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 5. It's the work of God, and the Lord is ready to do it. And when he cleanses us by the cleansing, washing of the blood of Christ, we're clean, we're pure, and we're made ready for heaven. It says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, and from Jesus who is the faithful witness 
and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He washed us from our sins in his own blood. As you come to the Lord and you repent and you turn away from the works of your hand, you turn away from your pride, religious pride, you turn away from the tradition of the elders, you turn away from everything you have been thinking, I'm good, I'm all right, I'm religious, I'm washing my hand, I'm washing this, I'm washing that, and I'm doing this, I'm doing that traditionally. As you turn away from all that tradition, and you know that cleansing, you know that salvation, you know that redemption only comes from the Lord, Jesus will wash away all your sins. And Jesus will cleanse you, and no stain will remain in your life in Jesus' name. In verse 6, and he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The glory of God will shine in your life. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 18. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. It's not talking about the clothing of your body with white garment, it's talking about the naked soul the naked inner man, the naked personality, the righteous one. He cleanses you in the blood of the Lamb and then he clothes you with the white raiment of righteousness. And it says so that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eyes salve that thou mayest see as many as I love a rebuke and chasing. He rebuked those Pharisees and he said, Woe unto you. He chastised those Pharisees and the scribes. He said, You may clean the outside of the cup, but inwardly you are unclean. You are defiled. And he said, He said that because of his love, so that they will turn away from tradition and they will turn unto the transforming power of the Lord. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasing. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. He will come into your heart. I will suck with him, and he was me. To him that overcometh, you will overcome. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, tell me, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The wife of Pilate spoke to him and said, have nothing to do with that just man. I suffered many things in the dream tonight because of him. But Pilate did not fully listen. He still scourged Jesus and handed him over to be crucified. Jesus spoke to the Pharisees and to the scribes. They didn't have ears to hear because they still kept on in their tradition. And as you come to the Acts of the Apostles, you still find them in their tradition. But he spoke to Peter, Peter heard, spoke to John, John heard, and he spoke to Matthew, Matthew heard, spoke to all those disciples, and they came out of the tradition of men. They were washed, they were cleansed, and the Lord told them, you are clean. And he told them, your names are written in heaven. You will hear. As you hear, he will cleanse you. As you hear, he'll purge you. As you hear, he'll purify you. As you hear, he'll possess your heart. Your name will be written in the book of life in heaven. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Look at chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 9. Chapter 7, verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, 
which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues should before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. I'll be among this number. I said I'll be among the number and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which seated upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels turned around about the throne and he bowed the elders and the four bees, the four living creatures, and fell before the throne and on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are rich in white robes? Whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, out of great trial, out of great temptation, out of great trouble. And they have washed their robes, they have washed their robes, they have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In the blood of the Lamb. That blood is still efficacious today. He'll wash you water than snow. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is available for you today. It's available for everyone today. If you are washed already, go back to Him and let Him make you whiter than snow. He'll cleanse your heart. He'll cleanse your soul. He'll cleanse your spirit. He'll cleanse your inner man. And He will give you the grace to go and live in righteousness for the rest of your life. And when the saints go marching in unto heaven, thank God you. I'm talking about you now. I said you. You'll be there. You'll go in with them in Jesus' name. Christ wants to receive you into heaven, but you must be cleansed from all your uncleanness by the blood of the Lamb. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Grace is available for you today. He will do it in your life. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. He wants to do that for you. He wants to do that for everyone. If he has done it already, check it off, check it off. And say, Lord, am I clean enough for heaven? Am I righteous enough for heaven? Am I holy enough for heaven? And if there's any blemish, it's available today. It's a gracious God. He'll cleanse you. He'll wash you. He'll make you ready for the coming of the Lord. Call on him. Let him cleanse and wash you. Put you. Make you whiter than snow.